Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Kurt T-Connector trailer wiring harness here on a 2021 Lincoln Nautilus. Our trailer wiring harness is going to simply transfer the signals from the vehicle to our trailer so we can let other motorists out on the road know what we're going to be doing, allowing us to arrive to our destination safe and sound. Now this is not only a security measure, it's also a legal requirement for towing in nearly every state. This kit here is going to provide us with a four-way, also known as a four-pole flat. That's the most common and standard type of trailer connector on the market, more than likely the one you're going to need here for your Nautilus. This is going to transfer all of your basic lighting functions, such as the stop and turn signal circuits for either side, as well as the running light circuit. Now there's another trailer connector out there known as a seven way that is still common here in the US, but this is only going to be for those larger trailers that have electric brakes. If you do have one of those, you'll still need this. You'll just also need an adapter, but more than likely you guys are just going to need that smaller four pole. So this is going to have everything you need. Trailer connector on this particular kit is stored outside the vehicle, which is nice because it allows for nice, easy, convenient access. Now with the kit, you're only gonna get a way to secure it to the safety chain loops using the dust cap, which is perfectly fine. That's how we have ours secured here. But if you'd like to opt for a little bit more permanent installation, you can use a series of brackets, which you can see over here. And we'll go over that a little bit more later in the video. Now, in regards to installation, this kit is going to be plug and play. There's no splicing into the vehicle whatsoever, so you don't have to worry about damage any of the factory wiring or voiding your warranty. The bulk of the installation is going to be routing a wire from the rear of the vehicle all the way up to the front where our battery is. But aside from that, it's definitely something a do-it-yourselfer or a weekend warrior can do by themselves at home in a few hours, just depending on your experience level. Just common hand tools required. You will need a set of wire cutters and crimpers, which most of those are two-in-one tools, pretty cost effective. But aside from that, as we said, pretty easy, definitely something you guys should be able to do. We'll go ahead and walk you through the entire process now. So the first step of our installation, you need to open up the hatch under tailgate here. Now, it doesn't matter what side you start on, but we do need to do this on both sides. We're gonna be removing our tail light. So you're gonna need a flathead screwdriver, pry from the top there, remove that cover. And then inside there is a T20 torque screw. Go ahead and remove that. Kind of tricky to get out of there because it is a little pocket. But then I'm actually just gonna pry out and away just a little bit to loosen that up. And then I'm gonna come back from the back side there and I'm gonna be prying up. Now, some tail lights are on there a little bit more than others. I like to do this to start, but you can see it's not really budging. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take a plastic trim panel tool I'm going to sneak it between the body and the tail light housing and I'm going to pry up to release that. Then we should just be able to push straight out here to release it like so. And now down here, sort of back behind the bumper, we're going to have an electrical connector you need to unplug. So there's going to be a center tab there. You press that down and you pull out. So now once we get our tail light off, starting on the driver's side, we're going to take some sort of fish wire. A fish wire can represent a number of different things, such as a piece of airline tubing that we have here, a plumb bob, or a wire coat hanger that you have unraveled. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to stick this back behind the bumper here, in front of the body on the vehicle, and we're going to fish this all the way down until we can find an open spot where it'll come out below. So here is where our piece of airline tubing came out, sort of down here in this area. Uh, where it's going to come out is really going to depend on where you routed it up inside the tail light. We kind of routed it towards the back corner there. But nonetheless, we have our piece of airline tubing here. Now the instructions state to take your connectors, tie them to this piece of airline tubing, and then take the other end and pull them back through the bumper. Unfortunately, this really just doesn't work the way they describe it. I've done these several times and every single time there's just not enough clearance behind that bumper for both these connectors to fit up there. I did it a couple times successfully, but it took a long time. So what I'm going to do is to save us some headache, you guys don't have to do this. The process is going to be pretty much the same. I'm actually just going to go ahead and cut three of these wires here just directly behind the connector. And then I'm going to reconnect them when we get up back behind the tail lights here. So now I'm just going to take these three wires. I'm going to tape them to my airline tubing and then I'm going to pull all the wires up into the uh, tail light pocket there. So again, this isn't required here. If you guys don't want to do that extra cutting, you will need to supply additional butt connectors for that that don't come in the kit. So keep that in mind as well. But if you don't want to do that, just simply tape your connectors to this pull line here and fish them up there. But I will warn you, it is going to be much harder than just having the bare wire in. So up to you guys what you want to do. The method is pretty much the same regardless. 
So we've got our wires pulled up in the tail light pocket here. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove them from our pull wire now. And then I'm going to splice on our new connector there. But if you guys didn't cut yours off, you need to obviously just start plugging in your connections. But we'll show you that here in the next step. So you can see we got our three buck connectors here, reattaching our connector. So now we're just going to go ahead and start plugging everything in. It should only go in together one way, so there's really not much room for air here. There's that one there. Make sure you go ahead and press the red locking tab. I'm going to shove our wires back down there because we don't have a ton to work with. And then I'm just going to simply take our tail light here, reconnect this as well, and then I'll re-secure the tail light to the vehicle. So sometimes you do kind of have to shove this connector down through there because you're obviously adding some extra material and wires here. So it can be kind of difficult sometimes. So now we're going to come underneath the vehicle here. Now our converter box is going to be sort of tucked up in this area here due to the length of wire they give us in your kit. So you got a couple options here. Number one, you can remove this panel. It's held in place with two screws on the bottom. You'll use a 5.5 millimeter socket for those. And then two nuts on the top, you'll use a 10 millimeter for those. And then we have a push pin fastener on the outside here. If you want to take that out to get it out of your way, that's perfectly fine. I'm actually just going to reach up here and secure the converter box to the bottom side of the metal panel here. So I'm going to have to reach up in there pretty, pretty far with my arm there to get everything secured. You guys probably aren't going to be able to see much, but once we get that secured, everything else we can show you pretty clearly. So I'm going to go ahead and get that up there now. In your kit, you're going to get some double-sided tape. I'm going to place on the back of that converter box to stick it up there to hold it in place. And I'm going to try to fit a self-tapping screw in there just as an extra measure of security. We're going to be taking the green wire that has your two connectors on it. We're going to be routing this back behind the pumper here over the exhaust and then over there up into the passenger side taillight pocket and then we'll secure these wires using the same method we showed you over here. So we went ahead and got that green wire routed over there to the passenger side, got everything hooked up and again it's exactly the same as everything we showed you over here. So now the next thing we're going to do is hook up our ground. So your ground already has a ring terminal pre-attached there. Unfortunately this one is going to be hard to see as well because it's going to be located up on the back of the vehicle here. We'll jump under there to try to give you a little bit better shot, but basically we just took a self-tapping screw and we just secured that to the bottom side of the body. So in this area here behind our trailer hitch in front of our muffler, there's a bare part of the four pan inside the vehicle there. So we went ahead and just took the self-tapping screw and just ground it straight to the ground there. So the next thing we're going to be doing is securing our trailer connector here. So we're going to have to come up and over the tailpipe. I'm going to zip tie it to the cross tube on our hitch here, and then we're going to be securing it to the safety chain loops on our trailer hitch. I've got my trailer connector wiring routed all the way over to the receiver tube. And as we said, we're going to take the included dust cap here and simply secure it to the safety chain loops like so. Now, this is a great method of securing your trailer connector because it's very cost effective, pretty easy to do. You don't have to buy any additional parts. But there is also another method that you can use that's a little bit more permanent. And that's going to be a series of brackets that you can see here. So this is two different brackets that we sell, this one and then the one you can't really see is a long no drill bracket. Now we actually had to bend that up quite a bit and it was pretty hard attaching it to the cross tube. So this method isn't for everyone, but if you're looking for something a little bit cleaner, a little bit more sturdier, then that's when you'd opt for the two bracket design. But this doesn't come in your kit, you'll have to purchase those separately and it's not required. So the choice is up to you. So now we have our power wire coming from the converter box. That's the last wire we need to deal with. I went ahead and crypt on a buck connector, which is the one you see here. Now we're just going to take the other end of our power lead we're going to attach it to that butt connector just like so. And now we need to run the other end of this wire up to the vehicle's engine bay compartment where the battery is. So we're going to go ahead and do that now and then we'll show you the path that we took. It's going to come straight off the converter box so it is sort of tucked up there. We actually just went behind this panel here. I sort of pulled back the fabric. I reached in there, I grabbed that. And now I'm going to run it up and over the subframe here. You can see I have a zip tie securing it to that ear on the subframe. It's going to go up and over here. You got to be careful because we have our axle. So I went ahead and zip tied it in a few places up here to some existing wiring. That way it's not going to fall down, get tangled up in our axles. Now we're going to come over here, up and over the filler neck for the gas tank. Follow along here. We have an existing wiring harness. I went ahead and zip tied it to here. You can see now. Now we're going to feed it pretty much above this panel, zip tie it to the brake lines following all the way to the front of the vehicle. 
Now I did remove these two nuts here with a 10 millimeter socket just so I could pull that down, get a couple more zip ties up there. Here's our wire coming out now. And then from this point here, you're gonna snake it up into the engine bay where our battery is. Now, in order to get the wire up there, you're not just gonna be able to reach up there. You're gonna to have to use some sort of a pull wire like the technique we showed you earlier. Beside the brake fluid reservoir in your battery is where we fish the line down through and then we just pulled it up in the same area. And as soon as you get the wire up here, make sure you pull it tight and attach a zip tie. That way you don't have to worry about the wire falling back down there. And from this point here, you're gonna cut off the extra slack there on your power wire crimp on one of your yellow butt connectors. The other end of that is gonna to go to the loop for your fuse holder, and then the other end of that is gonna to go to a ring terminal, and you'll just simply loosen that nut on the positive battery terminal there with a 10 millimeter socket, insert your fuse, and now we're ready to test. So now we're gonna be using a four pole tester, it's just a little plug in one here to test everything out. If you guys don't have one of these, you can pick one up or you could just use your trailer, but keep in mind if you do use your trailer, any issues on the trailer are gonna affect our testing on the vehicle. That being said, go ahead and run through our signals now. We got our brake, left turn, right turn, and then finally our tail lights. So now with everything tested and working correctly, that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Kurt T-Connector trailer wiring harness here on our 2021 Lincoln Nautilus.